Right, here we are guys, trying North Korea's number one alcoholic beverage, soju. I think there's actually ice in the noodles. Good afternoon from Little Pyongyang, a place where there are more North Koreans than anywhere outside of the Korean Peninsula. It's estimated that up to a thousand North Korean defectors live here in Little Pyongyang, also known as New Malden. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sampling some tasty North Korean food and also I wanna find some lovely North Korean snacks and or North Korean drinks. Now seeing as North Korea is a very secretive country where not much goes in or out, I feel like these products are gonna be very, very difficult to find. But nothing worthwhile in life is easy, is it? Right, I haven't eaten anything today, so I'm absolutely starving. And I think there's no better place to start than North Korea's national dish, Pyongyang Lamyong which means Pyongyang cold noodles. Now, during the 1950s, when the Koreans first came to New Malden, the Brits weren't very happy about it. However, New Malden at the time was a very, very struggling town, and the Koreans came in and boosted their economy. So after a while, the tensions faded and they were welcomed with open arms. Right, so here's our first stop. Haru Korean restaurant. Literally a two minute walk from the station. Now, I don't think that they're gonna have what I want on the menu. I don't think they would advertise North Korean food, you know, as the name states. However, they are just cold noodles with kimchi and other very, very famous North Korean food and meat and vegetables. So I don't doubt that they can make it for me. Hello there. Uh, do you serve uh, Pyongyang ramyeon, the cold, cold noodles? Yeah? With uh, kimchi and vegetables and meat, etc. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, lovely, thank you very much. Ooh, well, I'm the only one in here. However, the food smells amazing, so no doubt it's gonna be lovely. Yeah, to be honest with you guys, I've never had cold noodles with anything, never tried it before, only hot, obviously. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to try this, to be honest. Oh, perfect, thank you so much. Lovely, thank you. Lovely, cheers, thank you very much. Lovely, cheers. Oh, so we've got some starters here. We've got some Right, that's kimchi, I'm pretty sure. That's uh, pickled cabbage. Um, and we've got some, hmm, not sure what that is. Kind of looks like oranges a little bit. And then we've got some, uh, I think these are bean sprouts. So, all right, let's try and use these chopsticks. I'm, I'm okay with chopsticks, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert, but I'm all right. So here we've got the kimchi. Okay, let's try that first. I'm pretty sure I've tried kimchi before. Seems pretty, uh, pretty uh, full of spice and full of flavor. Mm, smells a little bit spicy, but that's good, I like it. Mmm, mmm, wow, mm-hmm. Nice little kick to it, not too much. Not sure what these are, actually. They kind of just look like little segments of orange. I'm, ugh, I don't know, not too sure, but we'll give it a go anyway. Oh, here's me saying that I'm okay with chopsticks and I'm acting like an absolute twat, right? Mmm, mmm, oh my God. I'm not sure what that is. It's sweet and spicy. It's kind of a, a sweet and spicy sort of taste. I think it is fruit. It does look like fruit, doesn't it? I'm not too sure. I'll ask when she comes back. And then we got the bean sprouts. Right. Okay. Mmm. I always have this in a chow mein, and it is just amazing. The crunch and the soft noodles combo, amazing. Oh my God, this is literally incredible food. Although I'm just thinking, was I supposed to eat those raw, or was I supposed to put it in the soup? I'm not too sure, actually. I think I may have just made a blunder, but you know what? Who cares? I wanted to try them anyway. They were delicious. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Do I do I put these into the soup or do yeah, I or on the side? Right, you put it inside or? Side dish. Side dish. Okay, lovely. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, here we go, guys. Right. Let's give a little uh, give a little sneak peek of what I'm eating. I think there's actually ice in the noodles. I'm pretty sure there is. Look. Yeah, look. Ice. And then you've got an egg on top. You've got some cucumber there. Got a bit of... Is that, is that beef? Yeah, thin slice of beef there, and uh, the noodles right in there. Oh, very excited to try this. Right, let me put this uh, put this camera down. Also, we were correct. These are side dishes. They don't go into the soup, which is uh, brilliant. I thought I'd make myself an absolute bell end as soon as I've got here. Right, here we go. Okay. All right, let's try some noodles first. It's so weird having these noodles cold. I just I didn't even know that these existed. I didn't know that you could really have noodles cold. But obviously, you can have them, but I didn't know people did have them. Right, here we go. Mmm. Oh my God. That is amazing. I did not think that cold noodles would taste that good. Oh my God. Got some, uh, I think that's some cabbage in there as well. All right, let's try some of these cucumbers. Mmm. Oh my goodness, guys. 
This is literally incredible. Right, let me get a bit of that beef as well. Here we go. A bit of beef and a little bit of noodle. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Mmm. Oh my God, that beef is so tender. Oh my goodness. Guys, this is oh, amazing. Got to have the classic staple piece egg in there as well. Mmm. Mmm. Mate, honestly, I did not expect that this was going to be so good. Like, really, truly amazing food. Cold noodles, who'd have thought? Mmm. There's not too much spice in here. It's more of just like a, a sort of savory umami type flavor. And the fresh vegetables combining with that, it's like a, a nice savory, but also a nice fresh, clean punch with it as well. To be honest, ice in noodles. Like, who'd have thought that'd be great? But it is, it's absolutely incredible, guys. I thought the noodles were gonna be like those uh, thick sort of udon noodles. Um, but to be honest, I think the thin noodles actually works better. I think I prefer thin noodles, to be honest with you. I can't quite tell what the base flavor is. Like, I feel like maybe it's just a bit of soy sauce or something like that. It's not overpowering. It's, uh, it's quite a mild flavor, but very, very delicious, honestly. I, I can't rate this enough, guys. If you haven't tried cold buckwheat noodles, Korean style, mate, you've got to try it. Oh, very, very nice, honestly, guys. Skilled culinary experts, that's for sure. Right, let me go and pay, and then we will continue our journey. 14.30, not bad. Lovely, very delicious. Also, what was the, uh, what was, what's the orange called? Radish. Radish, ah, oh, radish. And it's uh, bean sprouts and kimchi. and kimchi. Lovely, thank you so much. Lovely, great food, thank you very much. See you later, have a good day, thank you. Ooh. Wow. Right guys, shout out to Haru Restaurant. If you're ever in New Malden, make sure you go and check that out. Right, I am very, very thirsty now. That was very delicious, but very salty. So I need something to, to wash that down and to quench my thirst. Now, the most famous hot drink in North Korea is ginseng tea. I've never tried it before, so I'm very excited to try it. And there's a lot of coffee shops around here, specifically Korean coffee shops. So yeah, let's go and uh, have a little hunt for that now. Right guys, here we are. Here's the place, literally, the place. I think that's the place we're looking for, don't you? Right, let's go and see what they got, see if they got ginseng tea on the menu. Hi there, do you do uh, ginseng tea? Yeah? Could I just get one normal size ginseng tea, please? You don't have ginseng tea? Uh, what's the difference between ginseng and ginger? Is it kind of similar or is it not really? Yeah? All right, I'll go back and try and find it. If I can't, I'll come back, thank you. Oh man, they sold me a dream. They said they had ginseng tea, but they didn't. Right, I'm not letting that minor setback defeat me. I'm definitely, definitely gonna find this ginseng tea because I've heard it's absolutely bustling with flavor and very delicious. So I don't wanna miss out. I'm gonna find it. They're gonna have it here, 100%, they have to. Right guys, so I found another place. We've got the Korean culture and art center. However, they also have a little cafe where they sell food, and also, I'm guessing, they sell drinks because I've seen some people with drinks, so they must sell drinks. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a little look. Hi there, do you sell ginseng tea? Ginseng tea? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Uh, just, just one ginseng tea, please. Oh. Yes, please. Oh, it looks lovely in here. Look at all this food. <laughs> lovely Korean fried chicken, mate. Korean fried chicken is absolutely amazing. Right, I wonder how much this is. There's no menus or anything, but it's only a tea in it. It can't be more than a couple of quid. Oh, so this is like a little culture and art center as well as a cafe. I'm guessing it's just where all the Koreans who live in New Morden just come to have their daily coffee and their daily chat. Love it, absolutely love it, mate. Card? Lovely, thank you. Thank you very much. Do you normally put sugar in it or, or no sugar? Which, which is better, no sugar? Okay, thank you so much. Perfect, thank you very much. Cheers, thank you, bye-bye. Mate, two quid. What an absolute bargain. Well, there we go, guys. Right, let me just sit down here and then I can give you my full undistracted attention. Right, shout out to Korean Culture and Art Center in the background here. We've got our ginseng tea. He said it was better to have no sugar. Let me just uh, give that a little stir. Let that marinade in there for a little bit. Marinade, not the right word. Stew, that's the one. Let it stew in there for a little bit. 
Ooh, let's have a little, uh, let's have a little go on this. Mmm, smells, smells kind of savoury. Right guys, here we are. We've got the North Korean ginseng tea. Shout out to the Korean Culture and Arts Centre in the background here. First time ever trying ginseng tea. Let's go. Hmm. Oh, that is very refreshing. It doesn't really have much of a flavour to it though. Hmm. It kind of just tastes a little bit like ginger, like a tight, not much, just a, a little fragment of ginger there. Mmm. It's weirdly kind of, kind of savoury though. Never had a savoury taste in tea. It's not bad though, it's very refreshing as well. Very, very good on a hot summer's day, I bet. Mmm. Yeah, do you know what? That's not too bad. It actually, weirdly, kind of tastes like the soup that was in the noodles that I just tried. Mmm. It's not too bad though. Two pound as well, absolute bargain, mate. Shout out to the Korean Culture and Arts Centre, mate. Yeah, to be honest, not too bad. Mm. It just tastes like there's a lot of goodness in there. I feel like this is good for me, drinking this. Yeah, to be honest, guys, I'd fully recommend it. Well, that was bloody lovely, to be honest with you, for two pound as well, what an absolute bargain. Oi, shout out to these guys on this strip, honestly. Absolutely amazing stuff. Now, I've had a soft drink, and I think next it's time for a nice hard drink. So, the most famous alcoholic drink in North Korea is something called soju. It's very similar to Japanese sake, or sake, however you pronounce it. It's a, a rice wine that is fermented, and it's very, very good, apparently. Very tasty and very delicious. So, I'm gonna try and find a Korean supermarket somewhere, and then, I'm gonna go get myself some soju. I don't know what brand or anything to look for, so I'm probably gonna ask someone what they recommend. And yeah, let's go try some soju, mate. Right, here we are, guys. Seoul Plaza, a famous South Korean shop in New Malden. Now, although it is a South Korean shop, there is a mutual love for soju in Korea, north or south. And I think that despite the historical events and the tensions between the two countries, past and present, I think there's something quite nice and quite fitting that they can have a mutual love for something, despite all the nonsense. So we're gonna go and get some soju. Let's go. Right, let's go and find this soju, shall we? I'm not sure if you have to uh, actually look behind the counter if it's like England, um, where they have all the alcohol sort of behind the counter, or if they just have it on the shelf. God, there's loads of stuff in there. It's quite a big one, this actually. Shout out to Seoul Plaza. Right, I can't see any so far, is there? No, I think that's uh, I think that's just sauces and stuff. Right, ah, oh, here we go, here's the drinks, right. So we've got pineapple, lime, watermelon, blueberry, mango, melon, mate, so many flavors, and it's about four pound 50. It's not, it's not too bad actually, especially because it's probably imported. I mean, it's definitely imported. Um, so with the import fees on top, it's not too bad. 16.9% some of them. <sighs> It's gonna blow me socks off, mate. Right, so apparently this one here, Jinro Soju. This one's the best, apparently. It says that this is literally the number one spirit brand for sales worldwide. It's literally the, the best selling brand. So yeah, I think it's gotta be this one. And also the flavored ones, I, I don't really know if I want the flavored ones, you know? I think just the classic staple piece, pure soju. I think that's gotta be the one, right? How much? 5.49. Do you know what? 5.49 for like 16.5%, mate. That is not too bad. That is not too bad at all. Since 1924. Yeah, literally 100 years old. We're getting this one. Hello, just that please. Now, now it's 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 Lovely, Good. thanks so much. Thank Cheers, you. thank you. Oh, all right. Let's try some soju, eh? Right, here we are, guys, trying North Korea's number one alcoholic beverage, soju. It's freezing cold, so I better drink it before it starts getting warm. Okay, let's go. I'm not sure what to expect. I'm really not sure what to expect. Oh, it smells like... It smells a bit like vodka, to be honest with you. Vodka and hand sanitizer. Right, bottoms up. <laughs> oh! Oh boy, it certainly goes down like vodka. Oh, do you know what though? Nah, that's pretty good, not gonna lie. 
Oh. Once you get past the initial bleach taste, not even bleach, just pure ethanol, mate. Petrol. Oh man. Now, do you know what? It is pretty good. It's quite smooth. Like, once it goes down and the initial taste is like dissipated, mate, pretty decent. I feel quite tipsy already, to be honest with you. 16.5%. Jesus. Oh my God. I'm literally feeling half tipsy already in 30 seconds after two sips of that. My God. Packs a punch, mate. Have you guys tried soju? Let me know in the comments below if you have and if you liked it. Now, another reason that I didn't want to have any flavored versions or anything like that is because the traditional Korean way of drinking soju is just neat. A lot of people have it with meals, which I'm not too sure I could have it with a meal. I feel like it would make it taste even worse. Although maybe it would make the food taste better, like wine. You know when people have wine with dinner? Yeah, that's probably the same reason why they drink this neat. But bloody hell, that packs a punch, boy. That is, whew. That has gone straight to my head. Now you may be wondering, just like I was, how do the North Korean defectors survive when they get to the UK? Well, the answer is fairly simple. Obviously, by speaking Korean and not English, the only people that they can really integrate with into the community straight away are the South Koreans that live in New Malden. So the majority of the people who escape and come to the UK will be working as busboys, cleaners, etc. in the Korean restaurants. And sometimes you've got cooks and also people who just sort of work behind the scenes in the Korean restaurants. Now, the division and tension between the North and the South Koreans is not limited to the Korean Peninsula. The South Koreans that have hired the defectors for their workplace and their businesses have reported that due to the brutal regime that they have been brought up in, that they are absolutely brainwashed and they can't integrate with any society apart from their own due to the fact that they've experienced such trauma and just such psychological damage from growing up in North Korea. Right guys, we've tried Pyongyang cold noodles, we've tried kimchi, and finally, we've tried soju rice wine, the three most famous food and drinks in North Korea. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like down below if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos like this, and I'll see you later. Cheers.